Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's see where this equation came from, where the capacitance of a physical capacitor is equal to epsilon sub naught, which is the permittivity of free space, times the surface area of the plates divided by the distance between the plates. And then we'll see an example of how to utilize it. But first, let's go back to a capacitor and realizing, of course, that if there's positive charge on one plate and negative charge on the other plate, there will be an electric field between those two plates. And then using Gauss's law by essentially drawing a Gaussian surface around one of the plates, we can then say that the integral of E dot dA is equal to the charge inside divided by epsilon sub naught. And of course, the charge inside would be the charge on one of those plates. Well, E dot dA, since the direction of the electric field and the perpendicular to the surface is in the same direction, we can simply write it as the electric field times the total area of the plates is equal to, and instead of saying Q inside, we can write as it in terms of the surface charge density sigma times the cross-sectional area of the plate divided by epsilon sub naught. And then realizing there's an A on both sides that cancels out, so the electric field between the plates is simply the charge density divided by epsilon sub naught, or instead of writing the charge density, we can write it as charge divided by the area. Now, coming up here, we can also know that the voltage between the plates is the electric field times the distance between the plates. So instead of writing E, we can write E in this format right here. And so we end up with this equation right here where the voltage is equal to this. And now realizing that the definition of capacitance is charge divided by voltage, we can then take the charge and divide it by this quantity right here. And then when we simplify it, we can see that the capacitance indeed does indeed equal epsilon sub naught times the cross-sectional area of the plate divided by the distance between them. So that's where that equation comes from. That's how we relate capacitance in the electric field. So now let's see how big a capacitor you would need to hold one farad of charge. Or I, I should be, we shouldn't say one farad of charge, one coulomb of charge, right? So essentially, the capacitance equals one farad means if you apply one voltage to the capacitor, you would then hold one coulomb of charge. That's a better way of saying it. But how big does a one farad capacitor need to be? In other words, a capacitor that will hold one coulomb of charge, which is an enormous amount of charge, when you apply just a single one volt to those plates. Well, we have to rewrite this equation as follows. We can then say that the area of the plate is equal to the capacitance times the distance between the plate divided by epsilon sub naught. Capacitance is going to be one farad. Distance, let's call it one millimeter, which is 0.001 meter. And then we divide it by epsilon sub naught, which we define up here as 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12, and we can use units of farads per meter. All right, now we need a calculator. So we have 0.001 divided by 8.85 e to the 12 minus equals, and there it is. 1.13 times 10 to the 8 square meters. This would be equal to 1.13 times 10 to the 8 meters squared, which is over 100 million square meters. That's almost too impossible to imagine that you need such a large set of plates to hold that much charge when only one volt is applied to it. In other words, a one ferret capacitor would be enormous in size provided that the distance between them is one millimeter, which is a fair amount, we can actually put the plates closer together, and without any dielectric in between, which would enhance the capacitance as well. But that's quite a, quite a result, and that's another application of how you use this equation right here, and that is how it's done.